All right, so you received this paper after your test, and we're just going to do the notes, and then we're going to work on the rest of it in class. So I introduced to you exponential functions last time a little bit. Um, an exponential function is a function or equation, you could say, where the variable, usually it's x, sometimes it's like t for time, is in the exponent. All right, so like that. So the x is in the exponent. That's why it's called exponential function. Okay. So to discover the shape of the exponential function, um, let's graph some. So if we we're going to put some numbers in here, so you know I'm going to plug numbers in for x, right? So if I plug, let's start down here. If I plug a zero in, two to the zero is one. So I get the point zero one on the graph. So see, here's zero one. If I plug in two, or two plug in one, two to the one is two. So I get the point one two. Okay, and so on. Um, two two is four. Two to the third is eight. But you see, it starts to grow rapidly, right? So there's all those points there. Now, if you go backwards, like you put a negative exponent, well, two to the negative one, remember a negative exponent makes you pop that thing to the bottom. So one over two to the first will be one half. So you start to see, you know, negative one and one half. Okay. Then two to the negative two, well, that's one over two squared. So that's one fourth. So it gets lower and lower and lower. And this will be one ninth and then one sixteenth. So it's just basically the reciprocals of everything down here. All right, so some things about an exponential function. All right, get yourself like a highlighter or a colored pen or something like that. It's never, you see these numbers right here, they're getting smaller. As you go more negative, they're getting smaller. So it never really goes below zero. It um, has a horizontal asymptote, in fact, over across here. It has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, it does not have a vertical asymptote, it only has a horizontal, but it doesn't go below it doesn't get negative. Now, if you move the graph around, you know, it can get down here, but this basic one does not. Um, it's domain. You can plug anything you want into the exponent. So the domain is the width of the graph, right? Like it's negative infinity to infinity. It's range, though. It doesn't go below zero. So it starts at zero and it rises. So zero, it starts above zero, and then it goes up both parentheses. It doesn't touch the horizontal asymptote. Even though it looks like it does, it really just doesn't. Okay, so all exponential functions have this basic shape. Now this would be called a growth, right? Because as we were going to the right, it was growing. Um, it's called a growth because this number, the base right here, is larger than one, which we'll get to on the other page. Okay, so exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. If no transformations have moved the function up or down, you know, because if it moves up or down, then it's going to change, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay? So just like you used to do with all these other functions, like, you know, when we would have an absolute value problem, we'd say, oh, um, let's move it to the right two. So we'd put that, and up four, so we'd put this. So you can still do that with your exponential functions, right? Anything with the x moves it right or left. Anything afterwards moves it up or down. All right, so if you wanted to move, we're just going to use the basic one. We're going to use y equals 2 to the x. We want to move it up 3. So I'd have to say this. 2 to the x, I'd put a big plus 3 after the problem. All right, if I wanted to move it down 3, obviously I'd say 2 to the x minus 3. If I want to go left, um, move it to the left, that means I'd have to put a number with the x. So up in the exponent, I would put x uh, plus 3 to move it to the left. Uh, right 3 would be 2 to the x minus 3, okay? If you have a shrink or a stretch, so this has to multiply, so I have y equals, leave a little space, I have 2 to the x, so there'd have to be a multiplier in front. So to shrink it, I'd have to have a number less than 1. So I don't know, why don't we put like 1 third or something like that, okay? To stretch it, I'd have to have a number here that's bigger than 1, so why don't we put like a 5. All right, times 2 to the x. Now you might see this written this way too. Once you start putting a number there, you might do this. You put a 1 third, then you protect your 2, and then put the power on that. And this one you might see y equals 5, protect the 2, and then put the power on the x. Okay? All right, reflection of the x-axis. You're used to that. So if you put a negative in front, um, that reflects it down, right? And if you want to reflect over the y-axis, then you can put a negative with the x. Now reflecting it over the y-axis would make it look like this, right? And reflecting over the x-axis would make it come down, so it would look like that. Okay, just so you can kind of see how that would, would go. All right, so let's take a look over here. 
All right, so I want you to pause for a second and take this paper here and see if you can take these words and name these functions. All right, so hopefully you put a quadratic here. This one was our exponential. This one right here was our square root. This was our absolute value. This one was linear, right? Here's another absolute value. This was an exponential, x in the exponent. Another exponential, x in the exponent. This one, do you remember that that means cube root? So cube root. And this guy, exponential. Okay, so now let's talk about growth and decay. So when something grows, like what's the difference between here and here? So if I graph this, you know, y equals 4 to the x. Oops. So let's see, 4, put a power, oops, not a 4, 4 power x. So watch what happens. All right, it comes from the left, and you don't really see it too much, but it comes over here and rises up. So because that base, and look at your um, table. Oops, I need to fix my table. Oh, let's see. Hang on, give me a second. All right, there you go. So look, do you see all these answers over here? See how everything's multiplying by four. Everything's growing. It's growing very large, very fast. So that's an exponential growth, okay? So y equals four to the x. It's growing really fast. So the bigger the number, the faster it's gonna grow. All right, it still has an asymptote at y equals zero, and it's a growth. All right, this number is bigger than four. So when that value, when that base right there is um, bigger than four, I'm bigger than one, then it grows. All right, so if I do one fourth, so let me go here, let me do my this, so one fourth. All right, and so you see that it is a decay. It starts high and goes down. All right, so it starts high and goes down. And something important to point out is the y-intercept, okay? If you haven't moved the graph left or right or up or down, when you plug a zero in here, four to the zero power is one. So it has an intercept of zero, one. Same thing here, this to the zero power is one, so zero, one. So if you haven't moved it, then that's where it's gonna be, asymptote. All right, so this one's a decay. So anytime this number is less than one, it's going to be a decay, or between zero and one. All right, so over here, b, this is the number we're concerned about. So for growth, the b value is bigger than one. For decay, the b value is between zero and one. A number less than one, but bigger than zero, positive. All right, so we're just going to do a little bit here. Um, let's see, wrap up a couple things. Um, so we're going to graph everything on here. So let's see. So based on this number right here, this would be a growth, okay? My transformations are left one, down four. All right, and so imagine you had an asymptote at zero. If you move your graph to the left, so if you shift it to the left, that doesn't change this line. But moving it down four, pushing it down four, it means you have to move this down four as well. So since our asymptote was horizontal, it's gonna move down with me, so it's gonna be down here at negative four. Okay, so y equals negative four. My y-intercept, so if I plug zero into my function, very simple, zero plus one is one, so I get three to the first power minus four. Well, that's three minus four, so that's negative one. And my x-intercept, we're gonna use our calculator for that in a minute, and here. All right, so let's use our calculator for the rest and see what happens. So I can put zero, negative one, there it is, okay. All right, so let's see. All right, three power x plus one, and you can put this stuff on Desmos too, um, minus four. But on Desmos, you have to put parentheses around this or else it gonna, it's not gonna go up there. All right, so here's my graph. There it is, rising up really fast. All right, so it looks like my x-intercept is a little bit close to the origin, up to the right. So when I draw it, I'm gonna make it come up here, go up really fast. It comes down over towards my asymptote, okay. All right, so my x-intercept. Oh, let's do this end behavior. When x goes to the left, so the left 
it's just coming down towards this asymptote, this horizontal asymptote, just like last chapter. It's going towards negative four. Ugh, goodness, negative four. And the right side's going up, for, up to infinity, so, but nobody asked about that. All right, so my x-intercepts. We'll practice this in class, but look at that x-intercept. That's a zero, right? So you have to do second calc. You have to choose number two, zero, and you have to tell the calculator to look between zero and one. All right, so left side is zero, enter, and then you have to type in, you know, one, enter, right, and there it is. Oops, press enter again. All right, so 0 0.26, we'll say. Okay, all right, let's see. So I would like you, we will finish this rest of this in class, but I would like you, um, after I go and do these, exa these three examples, I want you to finish this section right here. Okay, all right, so for example, um, I wanna write whether this is growth or decay and then name the transformations. So this two right here indicates that this is a growth. And the only thing remaining is this four. That's gonna be a stretch. Okay. All right, this guy. This seven indicates I have a growth. Okay. This one fourth indicates that the graph has been shrunk, so a shrink. And this plus one is with the X, so it makes me move to the left one. Now, I also want you to say the horizontal asymptote. Now, these two graphs right here have not been moved up or down. So the horizontal asymptote is still Y equals zero. Okay. All right, um, here, last one. All right, this guy tells me that this is a decay because it's less than one. The five tells me that this thing has been stretched the plus two tells me it moves to the left two. And the minus one tells me it goes down one. Now, my horizontal asymptote, remember it's horizontal. So if you move left or right, nobody cares, but up or down affects you. So this number affects it. So Y equals negative one. Okay, all right, so you do the other ones here, the other um, five problems, and that is it. I'll see you in class, bye-bye.